guys what's up so i have covered the first 100 mcqs let us cover the remaining 90 percent of the content and after watching this course rest assured you will know a lot of things about environment and ecology ecology is the study of how living things interact with so as the like topic is uh, environment and ecology so environment includes both the living things that is biotic and non-living things that is abiotic so answer is c so ecology is a branch of biology that deals with the relations of the organisms to one another and to their physical surroundings so here the living things are called as biotic and non-living things are called as abiotic very very simple which of the following are correctly matched lithosphere is basically solid crust or hot top layer of the earth hydrosphere is watery part of our surface atmosphere is thin layer of air that surrounds the earth so answer is b that is two only and first and third are reversed question number 103 the sum of all the ecosystem on earth is known as that is basically called as biosphere so biosphere is one of the four layers that surround the earth along with lithosphere hydrosphere and atmosphere it is some of all the ecosystems and part of the world in which life can exist and here atmosphere lithosphere and, and hydrosphere interact this is the only limited part where the, all these three layers interact question number 104 which of the following is a natural ecosystem so answer here is aquarium is definitely not it is man-made zoo is also man-made but mangroves are natural answer is c mangroves so a natural ecosystem is made up of the all the plants animals and environment just remember 10 will it be there ten thousand years ago if it was the answer then the answer is yes generally natural ecosystems are used resource inputs which are found within the ecosystem they are indigenous and or native to that area but aquarium and zoological park they will need a lot of maintenance and hence they are called as artificial ecosystems which of the following statements are correct genetic diversity is very high in artificial ecosystem impossible in artificial ecosystem genetic diversity is very low genetic diversity is very high in natural ecosystem so one and two are definitely wrong so the only possible answer that can be is three only and uh, artificial ecosystems have incomplete nutrient recycling hence extra resources are required for the ecosystem to function that is correct that is why you might see people put a lot of resources in aquarium etc so artificial ecosystems they have been created or altered by humans and are not necessarily found in nature they cannot function like its natural counterpart and there is incomplete nutrient recycling hence extra resources are required for the ecosystem to continue functioning and genetic diversity is very low in artificial ecosystem food webs are very simple or even incomplete due to killings of pest species question number 106 a genetically distinct geographic variety population or race within a species which is adapted to specific environmental condition is called as so that is ecotype so ecotype is a genetically distinct geographic variety population or race within a species which is adapted to specific environmental condition for example tundra reindeer and woodland reindeer are two ecotypes of reindeer itself and phenotype is the composite of an organism's external characters basically whatever you can see or observe like height weight etc all these are phenotypes and uh, behavior also and niche is basically a very specific function or position of a species in a given ecosystem question number 107 the primary source of energy in ecosystem always sunlight always okay so the sun is the primary source of energy for organisms and the ecosystem of which they are a part and producers such as plants algae and cyanobacteria use the energy from sunlight to make organic matter from carbon dioxide and water question number 108 which of the following statements about abyssal zone is correct the abyssal zone remains in perpetual darkness at depth of four to six kilometers this is correct in the ecosystem the sun is not the primary source of energy yes here it is not because sunlight does not penetrate to such a depth so the only organisms that inhabit this zone are chemotrophs and predators that can withstand immense pressures. Three main sources of energy and nutrients here include marine snow, whale falls and chemosynthesis. Okay. Question number 109. The producers and consumers in ecosystem can be arranged in several feeding groups, each known as. So feeding means nutrition, nutrition means trophic. So answer here is A, trophic level. So trophic levels are the hierarchical levels in an ecosystem consisting of organisms sharing the same function in the food chain and the same nutritional relationship to the primary source of energy and trophic level is the position that an organism occupies in a food chain what it eats and what eats it 
क्वेश्चन नंबर वन वन जीरो विच ऑफ द फॉलोइंग रिगार्डिंग सिंपल फूड चेन इन्वॉल्विंग ओनली प्रोड्यूसर्स हर्बीवोर्स एंड कार्निवोर्स आर करेक्टली मैस्ड ट्रॉफिक लेवल वन आर कार्निवोर्स दिस इज रॉन्ग ट्रॉफिक लेवल वन इज प्रोड्यूसर ट्रॉफिक लेवल टू इज हर्बीवोरस ट्रॉफिक लेवल थ्री इज कार्निवोर्स आंसर इज टू बी सिर इन एनी इको सिस्टम प्रोड्यूसर्स ऑलवेज रिप्रेजेंट द फर्स्ट ट्रॉफिक लेवल हर्बीवोरस द सेकेंड प्राइमरी कार्निवोरस द थर्ड एंड टॉप कार्निवोरस द लास्ट सो यूजली दिस इज देयर सो थैंक यू वॉचिंग दिस लेसन Hey guys, what's up? So let us discuss question number one hundred eleven to one hundred twenty in environment and ecology. And uh, let's get started. And this is will be a one-stop solution for all the thousand MCQs. By the time you're done with the static portion, trust me, most of the questions which you'll find from the static portion in any government exam will be from this. The study of the interaction of an individual organism or a single species with the living and non-living factors of its environment is known as OT. Ot means single species, sin means many species. So, ot ecology is the answer. So, ot ecology, also called as species ecology, is the study of the interaction of an individual organism or a single species with the living and non-living factors of environment, and it aims to measure factors such as nutrient availability, firelight, humidity, in relation to the organism or species thriving in a particular environment. And sin ecology is the study of group of organisms or many species or communities in relation to their environment. So, ot means single species, sin means group of species. Which of the following are correctly matched? Peripatric speciation members inhabiting a peripheral region of the range undergo reproductive isolation. So that is correct. Sympatric speciation. Um, some sympatric uh, speciation is basically. Uh, reproductive isolation and allopatric speciation is geographical isolation. So answer is A one only. So allopatric speciation occurs when population becomes separated by geographical barriers like mountain, rivers, etc. And sympatric occurs when two or more species are formed from a single ancestral species, all occupying same geographical area, but they are not reproductively compatible. Formation of two or more species from a single ancestral species, all occupying same geographical area, is known as. So that is called as I have already explained. Uh, they are sympatric speciation. They are not reproductively compatible with each other. And when population becomes separated by geographical barriers like mountains and rivers, it is allopatric. Okay. And evolution is uh, change in heritable characteristics of living organisms over successive generations. And coevolution is mutual evolutionary influence between two or more interdependent species. Question number one one four. The evolution of polar bears from brown bear is an example of. That is a typical example of peripatric speciation because a small group of members inhabiting a peripheral region of the range undergoes reproductive isolation to form a new species. That is a typical example of peripatric speciation. So during the Pleistocene period, what happened was glaciation resulted in isolation of a small population of brown bears, and the members of this population acquired white fur for camouflaging because of snow. Ability to swim in extremely cold water and over long distances, tolerance to extremely cold conditions, and many more. The effect of a gene that favors cigarette smoking has dwindled in some groups of humans in just one generation. This is an example of, this is an example of microevolution because it is happening at DNA level. So microevolution is a change in species at molecular or DNA level, and small changes can happen through a lot of mutations or other random environmental factors, etc. Uh, organisms which occupy same ecological niche in different geographical regions, they are called as, they are basically ecological equivalents. So there are a lot of such people. Okay. So species which are ecological equivalents are taxonomically much different, and a grassland type ecosystem develops where there is a grassland climate, but the species of grasses and grazers may be quite different where regions are widely separated, and grasses in temperate and semi-arid part of Australia are very very different from those of Similar climatic region of North America. Consider the following types of interaction: commensalism, mutualism, parasitism. Which one of the following will promote coevolution? All three will promote coevolution because in commensalism one will get benefited, in parasitism one will get benefited, other will get harmed, and mutualism both will uh, evolve equally. So mutualism is typical example is lichen where algae and fungal live together. Parasitism is like uh, there are so many examples. Let's say tapeworm is a parasite on human beings, so they have to evolve. Along with human beings, commensalism is basically barnacles on a fish where fish does not get harms. Uh, let's say whale whale does not get harm, but barnacles get benefited. So answer is D one two three. So it occurs when in adapting to their environments, two or more organisms evolve together. Hence, interaction between different species of animals become a prerequisite for coevolution. And if both of the interacting species have reciprocal effects on the fitness of the other species, the two species may coevolve. Question number one hundred eighteen. Which of the following statements about troposphere is or are correct? 
all the weather phenomena like rainfall fog hail storm etc they occur in troposphere and troposphere is ideal for flying aeroplanes no 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 aeroplane fly in troposphere because yahan pe to there are clouds rainfall the plane always fly above the troposphere and it flies above the troposphere and stratosphere almost at the junction of troposphere and stratosphere but not below the troposphere okay so answer here is a one only so troposphere consists of almost all of water vapor and dust particles in atmosphere most cloud 99% are formed in this layer and stratosphere is free from clouds associated weather phenomenon making conditions most ideal for flying aeroplanes so aeroplanes almost fly at the junction of troposphere and stratosphere at roughly 10 kilometers which of the following are correctly matched so stratosphere is uh, ozone layer yes absolutely correct thermosphere thermal insulation to earth no 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 this is wrong and uh, mesosphere radio transmission this is also wrong thermosphere is responsible for radio transmission and uh, mesosphere is basically the third layer of atmosphere and it lies above stratosphere up to the height of 80 kilometers and meteors burn up in this layer on entering from space and thermosphere extends to 80 to 40 km and ionosphere is a small part of thermosphere which helps in radio transmission question number 120 the coldest part of our atmosphere is located in which of the following layers so in thermosphere temperature decreases and it reaches uh minimum temperature by tropopause then in stratosphere temperature again increase then in mesosphere temperature declines and that becomes the lowest part at the top of mesosphere so in mesosphere temperature decreases as the height increases and temperature can reach minus 90 degrees celsius air is much much thinner in the mesosphere than in the stratosphere there are fewer air molecules to absorb in compelling electromagnetic radiation from the sun and mesosphere has a lot of radi- radiative cooling because co2 present here emits a lot of thermal radiation into space so thank you for watching this lesson hey guys what's up so let us discuss question number 121 to 113 environment and ecology question number 121 sine ecology is the study of so in last lesson i told you about sine ecology is community level and ecology of one individual is ot ecology so answer here is c ecology of a community so sine ecology is focused at understanding the interaction of group of organisms or species within a community if community was not there then many species are also correct it studies the distribution structure demography abundance of these organisms which coexist in a community and it may look into the symbiotic relationship occurring in a community like competition mutualism commensalism predator prey population dynamics question number 122 hypolimnion is the upper layer of water oxygen rich absolutely wrong hypolimnion is the lower layer of water oxygen poor epilimnion is lower layer of water oxygen poor this is wrong it is upper layer of water body oxygen rich metalimnion is a transition between hypo and epilimnion that is correct so answer here is a three only so basically they have reversed it here okay it is also called as thermocline because there is a sharp fall in temperature here question number 123 sine ecology helps us to understand the relationship between individual plant and environment that is wrong it is ot ecology ot ecology helps us to understand what is community and environment this is also wrong so they have reversed ot ecology and sine ecology see ot ot means individual and sine means group so answer here is d neither one nor two okay so the trophic state of a lake is regulated by which of the following factors the rate of nutrient supply 100% correct the climate shape of basin all these are correct so answer is 1 2 3 trophic it basically means nutrients if it increases more it is called as eutrophication with the good nutrition so factors which regulate state of a lake are rate of nutrient supply so if it is more for example industrial waste etc then the trophication will increase amount of sunlight temperature hydrology and finally the shape of lake basin which is called as morphometry that is depth volume surface area and watershed to lake surface area ratio question number 125 which of the following organisms belong to trophic level 1 So the trophic level one is basically producers. So trees is a producer, grass is producer, phytoplankton are also producer. All of these are producers. Since all of them are producers, they belong to trophic level one. These are the organisms which converts like solar energy into uh, chemical energy through food via via photosynthesis, etc. Darwin's finches, Galapagos finches are an example of. So they are an example of allopatric speciation because of like there is a huge. Uh, barrier and there is uh, they are on different islands in Galapagos archipelago, which is located very close to Ecuador in South America, and the finches are isolated from one another by the ocean, and over millions of years each species of finch developed a unique beak that is specially adapted to the kinds of food it eats. 
and because they are geographically isolated the birds don't breed with one another and have therefore developed into unique species with unique characteristics this is a typical example of allopatric speciation which of the following is the hottest layer of the atmosphere so here the thermosphere becomes the hottest uh, the it is more than 2000 degrees celsius but you can't feel the heat because there are very few molecules which carry it here so thermosphere is relatively few molecules and atoms and even absorbing small amounts of solar energy can significantly increase the temperature but you will not feel the hot sensation here if somehow you reach there and if i remove your let's say gloves or anything you will not feel very hot thermosphere is the hottest layer in the atmosphere because for conduction the air is very rarefied so which of the following are the effects of eutrophication i have already told you u means good eutrophication means nutrition so there is good nutrition so obviously plant algal and animal biomass will increase 100% correct turbidity means like the water will be putrid it's not visible and it will be thick so that is also correct rate of sedimentation will also increase that is also correct anoxic condition will develop the speciation will change different species will come majority species might go so main effects include plant and algal biomass increase turbidity increase rate of sedimentation increase shortening the lifespan of the lake anoxic conditions may develop and species diversity decrease and the dominant species change the process by which a species and higher group of uh, taxa originate change and then go extinct it is known as macro evolution because it is major evolutionary transition from one type of organism to another occurring at the level of species and higher taxa so it is an evolution on a scale at or above the level of species in contrast to micro evolution which refers to smaller evolutionary change of allele frequencies within a species or population and coevolution occurs when two or more species reciprocally affect each other for example it happens in parasitism mutualism etc a form of competition in which individuals of different species compete for the same resources in an ecosystem is known as since they are competing for the same resources it is called as interspecific competition because it is competition between two different species so competition basically refers to symbiotic interaction between or among living things for limited resources it can be in the form of territory goods food mates etc and it is a form of competition between different species of the same ecological area example can include lions tigers let's say cheetah also for similar prey so thank you for watching this lesson hey guys what's up so let us discuss question number 131 to 140 and environment and ecology okay question number 131 consider the following statements about intraspecific competition so it is a competition for resources among the same species intra means within okay international means within the nation international means between different countries intra specific competition generally being a stronger force than inter specific competition yes yes very much true answer is c both one and two so when the same members of this when the members of same species compete for limited resources it is called as intra specific and uh, they have very similar resources requirements but when we talk about inter specific competition they have smaller contested or resource overlap so inter specific competition is very strong as compared to inter specific usually which of the following organism belong to trophic level 2 so trophic level 1 is always producers like plants trees phytoplanktons trophic level 2 will include herbivores like zooplanktons or it can include cows buffalo etc so but uh, mango tree is a tree every tree is a tree so answer here is b2 and 3 but uh, insectivorous plants might in go on trophic level 3 as well so answer here is b2 and 3 so the second trophic level consists of herbivores which are directly dependent on primary producers and they are also called as primary consumers or secondary producers mango tree is a tree so it belongs to the trophic level 1 which of the following are included in hydrosphere of earth swamp river ocean aquarium everywhere where there is water and life that is called as uh, biosphere and life and if it is just water it is called hydrosphere so hydrosphere is a total amount of water on a planet and biosphere is that part of hydrosphere atmosphere and lithosphere where life exists and hydrosphere includes water that is on the surface of the planet underground and above and a planet's hydrosphere can be liquid vapor or ice and hence all the water bodies given in the question are included in the hydrosphere question number 134 which of the following leads to a reduction in fitness for both individuals involved in an interaction so if you have intraspecific competition it is the worst possible competition so intraspecific competition is an interaction whereby let's say you also want bread to eat i also want bread to eat because both of us are human so that is intraspecific so members of the same species compete for very limited resources it will reduce fitness of all the individuals and most often it will lead to differences in fitness amongst individuals 
and they are competing for the same resources the fitness of individuals will gradually decline and because competition is often more intense as population size increases or resources decreases the effect of competition is often density dependent that is at higher population density competition increases and this will adversely affect survivorship and births that is population size okay question number 135 biotic and abiotic components are linked together through so they are linked together through nutrient cycles energy flow so uh, answer here is a b c so an example of the interaction between abiotic and biotic factor is with plants and plants use sunlight water and co2 to make food and the food which is created by plants will be consumed by other trophic levels like primary consumer secondary consumer and which shows that interaction between abiotic and biotic factors occur throughout the nutrient cycle and an energy flow in an ecosystem question number 136 two male lions fight over a territory is an example of intraspecific competition okay so because they belong to the same species and hence it is an example of intraspecific competition uh, when arizona's grand canyon found squirrels and other mammals that had once been part of a single population could no longer contact and reproduce with each other through the new geographic barrier they would no longer interbreed the squirrel population intervent so they underwent allopatric uh, speciation so allopatric speciation occurs when a species separates into two separate groups which are isolated from one another and a physical barrier like mountain range or a waterway makes it impossible for them to breed with one another each species basically develops differently based on the demands of their unique habitat or the genetic characteristics of the group and that are passed on to the offspring question 138 which of the following statement is correct habitat is the physical environment in which an organism lives that is correct all habitats are environments but all environments are not habitat 100 percent correct all environment lives uh, always has life in it whereas a habitat does not necessarily have life in it so this is wrong answer here is c1 and 2 so habitat is the physical environment in which an organism lives so habitat has to have a life okay but environment may not have a life in it okay question 139 environment is physical chemical and other natural forces around us habitat is area that is inhabited by a particular species biosphere is basically biological composition or hydrosphere lithosphere you know, where these three layers meet hydrosphere uh, lithosphere and and atmosphere okay so both these statements are, all these statements are correct answer is d123 and last question a structural and functional unit of environment is answer is always ecosystem so ecosystem is a structural and functional unit of environment comprising of all the organism in a particular place interacting with one another and with their environment and interconnected by an ongoing flow of energy and a cycling of material habitat is the area where an organism lives biosphere is the region of earth that supports life hydrosphere is total amount of water on the planet it includes surface underground as well as above the ground so thank you for watching this lesson hey guys what's up so this is the ultimate course on environment and ecology where i am discussing 1000 mcqs and by the time i'm done with it like you don't need to study anything at all for environment static portion obviously you will need to study the dynamic portion because i can't predict that what is going to happen in future we have already covered 150 mcqs till date and uh, just 850 more to go so let us discuss the environment and ecology mcqs question 151 to 150 an area of land that contains an exceptional number of endemic species and is threatened with destruction is known as so a hot spot so answer where comes d so a national park is an area which is strictly reserved for the betterment of wildlife and biodiversity and where all the activities are not permitted biome is an area that is like a huge area classified according to the plants and animals that live in it and a sanctuary is a protected area and a limited private ownerships and all that are allowed here national park nothing is allowed and biosphere reserves can have national park and sanctuary inside it okay question number 142 lichens which are fungus plus algae mutualistic symbiotic relationship inhabiting a barren lava covered land is an example of pioneer obviously it is the first species that is coming climax is the last species that comes answer here is a pioneer species so pioneer species are hardy species which are the first to colonize a previously disrupted or damaged ecosystem beginning a chain of ecological succession that ultimately leads to a more biodiverse steady state ecosystem intermediate species and climate climax community are the organisms which succeed the pioneer species in the due process of succession 
सो आंसर हेयर इज ए विच ऑफ द फॉलोइंग स्टेटमेंट इज आर आर करेक्ट मेंबर्स ऑफ बायोटिक कम्युनिटी इन एन एरिया आर डिपेंडेंट ऑन वन अनदर दैट इज देयर प्लांट्स एंड एनिमल्स हैव वेल एस्टेब्लिश्ड इंटरडिपेंडेंस फॉर रिप्रोडक्शन यस यस 100 परसेंट बर्ड्स एंड मैमल्स हेल्प एंड डिस्पर्सल ऑफ सीड्स एंड फ्रूट्स यस थ्रू एक्टिंग एज अ पॉलिनेटिंग एजेंट आंसर इज डी वन टू थ्री सो इंटरडिपेंडेंस बिटवीन द मेम्बर्स ऑफ अ बायोटिक कम्युनिटी is shown in their interaction mainly for food space reproduction and protection and the statement too is illustrated by the role of insects in pollination as well question number 144 which biome has the following characteristics low biotic diversity uh, it cannot be tropical rainforest it cannot be tropical deciduous forest it in fact cannot be even grasslands short season of growth and reproduction simple vegetation structure The most suitable here is tundra because it will have short season of growth and reproduction because most of the time it is covered with snow and simple vegetation structure only very few species are here so extremely cold climate low biotic diversity simple vegetation structure limitation of drainage short season of growth and reproduction energy and nutrients in the form of dead organic material Large population oxidation. So these are some of the feature of tundra biome. In grassland ecosystem, which of the following belongs to the highest trophic level? Answer here is C. That is carnivores. So they belong to the highest trophic level because they are the one who sits on the top and eats everyone else. While the bottom most is the trophic one or the plant or the producer level. So in a grassland ecosystem. carnivores will carnivores will lie on the top of the food chain and hence they will belonging to the highest trophic level producers that is the plants the grasses will belong to the trophic level 1 and herbivores will belong to the trophic level 2 uh, question number 146 a high density of tiger population in a region can result in answer here is intra specific competition so intra specific competition is an interaction whereby the members of the same species compete for the limited resources this is the worst form of interaction it kills the fitness of all the organisms in the species like man competing with man inter specific competition is like uh, buffalo competing with cow for water so it is a form of competition in which individuals of different species compete for the same resources in an ecosystem it is not that hard predation is basically a biological interaction where a predator and organism that is hunting feeds on its prey the organism that is attacked and secondary succession is basically a series of community changes which uh, takes place on already all, all colonized uh, structure and but it is disturbed or damaged habitat question number 147 which of the following statement is correct Uh, parasitism is any relationship between organisms of different species in which one organism is inhibited or destroyed while the other organisms remains unaffected that is amensalism for example penicillium and uh, uh, any other bacteria or allelopathic effect of certain plants where their root secretes some chemicals uh, which basically destroys the nearby plants and uh, nothing happens to the plant which secretes the chemicals they are unaffected but the nearby plants get destroyed so that is called as amensalism amensalism is where one species benefits at the expense of other the host so this is what we called as parasitism so for example tapeworm or ascaris roundworms living inside human beings they will be a parasite answer here is d neither one nor two so they have basically reversed the role so amensalism is any relationship between organisms of different species in which one organism is inhibited or destroyed while the other organism remains unaffected while parasitism is where one species benefits at the expense of other which is called as the host which of the following is the major metal pollutant released from a automobile engine answer here is lead so lead is the most dangerous most hazardous metal pollutant present in the automobile exhaust but now they have certain filters catalytic converters which decreases it and lead free petroleum is also available now and lead also damages kidneys brain especially hearing and physical growth and it causes learning difficulties behavioral problems tooth decay many other long term serious health effects um question number 149 by the way the if there is excess lead then it is called as plumbism which of the following events will most likely cause secondary succession 
forest fire yes for sure harvesting yes hurricane yes forest fire and hurricane are same here and harvesting is also the same basically or uprooting or destroying the existing vegetation to certain extent so that it allows other species to come and thrive so secondary succession is an ecological succession that begins where an ecosystem was disturbed by an event such as fire flood harvesting or hurricane that reduces an already established ecosystem example a forest or a wheat field to a much smaller population of species that is absolutely correct and uh, intermediate stage found in ecological succession in an ecosystem advancing towards its climax community is known as so answer here is a serial community so sear is basically an individual stage which a species can occupy within the ecological succession so a serial community or sear is an intermediate stage found in ecological succession in an ecosystem advancing towards its climax community and in many cases more than one serial stage evolves until climax conditions are attained so thank you hey guys what's up so let us discuss question number 151 to 160 and in this course i am trying to put 1000 mcqs which will cover all the important static concepts of environment and ecology because there is not one good ma book in the market like lakshmi kant for polity so that is why i thought i'll make a book out of a course and you can just like um, watch it and there is no need to like read for static portion obviously there is a lot of current affairs so that you will need to cover on your own consider the following statements about ecological succession it is a random and bidirectional process this is absolutely wrong it is a unidirectional it is a very thought out sequential change in the species composition of a natural community so this statement is absolutely wrong species diversity increases as succession succession proceeds so that is correct so second statement is absolutely correct and the food chain relationships become more complex more complex the food chain and the food web better it is for the Uh, environment so answer here is c that is 2 and 3 so ecological succession is a unidirectional and sequential change in and the sequential progression of species during this succession is not random and at every stage certain species have evolved life histories to exploit the particular conditions of the community and this situation imposes a partially predictable sequence of change in the species composition of communities during the succession and as your succession goes on the complexity increases the food web increases the number of species increase and finally you have climax community question number 152 which of the following statement is or are correct troposphere is thicker over the equator than at poles yes that is absolutely correct so regions near equator receives more sunlight than the poles making them hotter and less air dense so equatorial gases will reach greater heights and hence the density of air is less at equator and greater at poles so density of the air is less at equator and greater at pole so that is also correct so answer here is c both one and two so regions which are near the equator they receive more sunlight okay than the poles making them hotter okay and less air dense okay so equatorial gases will reach greater heights to exert the same pressure as at the poles hence the density of the air is less at equator and greater at poles but troposphere is thicker at equator than at the poles question number 153 The gradual reduction in the amount of global direct irradiance at the earth surface is known as so that is called as global dimming so answer is C so global dimming is a substantial decline in the amount of the sun's energy which reaches the earth surface and it is not thought to be due to the changes in the sun's luminosity as these have been too small to explain uh, the magnitude of dimming observed and instead air pollution from human activity that is thought to be the major contributor in global dimming and uh, aerosols which form uh, from pollution can directly reflect absorb radiation before it reaches the planet surface and make clouds brighter longer lasting meaning they reflect more sunlight question number 154 which ecosystem has the following characteristics for plants found in them so they have smaller leaves and stems so mangroves don't have smaller leaves tropical evergreen forest don't have smaller leaves tropical de deciduous forest don't have smaller leaves but desert ecosystem have smaller leaves extremely extended and deep root systems so that is typical of desert ecosystem abundant thorns and needles to protect from being eaten hair swags or dust that covers the leaf to protect from transpiration losses so answer here is pretty straight forward answer here is d that is the desert ecosystem so smaller leaf and stem size allows the plant to concentrate its water instead of spreading it out over a wider surface area 
and scarcity of water in desert has made plants to develop deep and extended roots to seek out water and moisture basically evaporates through the leaves and leaves are used for photosynthesis turning sunlight into energy for the plant to grow hence they have tiny leaves to reduce water uh, water's escaping while still allowing the photosynthesis and since the plants store moisture inside themselves they require some sort of protection against these animals so answer here is d uh, question number 155 primary productivity is highest in which of the following ecosystems so answer is tropical rainforest or tropical evergreen forest so net primary productivity is basically the energy converted for the most part by green plants from solar energy to the chemical energy and primarily in the form of sugar minus the energy lost through the trans respirations and it is affected by temperature availability of water carbon dioxide nutrients and by the efficiency of conversion of light energy to the chemical energy of carbohydrates and since in the tropics where rainforests are found water light high temperatures are readily available and there is a dense concentration of green plants at all the levels from the lower stories to the canopy and it is no wonder that these forests have very high level of productivity question number 156 uh, predation influences the fitness of so both predator and prey so answer is c so the predator prey interactions are bidirectional so for example if deer becomes faster cheetah is also to evolve to become faster and more agile and if cheetah becomes faster than deer have to become more fast so the fitness of prey and predator should be dependent on their counterparts personality types and the different composition of predator prey personality may influence prey fitness in a population and in a population with a high density of more aggressive predators being a more predictable prey can lead to higher fitness of predator and prey can even go extinct and in contrast when the population has a high density of more docile predators being more unpredictable may lead to higher fitness question number 157 biotechnology is the exploitation of natural resources at the microbial and molecular level for benefit of mankind so that is correct human genome project has helped to determine the exact cellular composition of all human organs no no this is wrong it is just the nucleotide sequence that make up the dna okay so thoda zyada ho gaya so answer here is statement 1 is correct and it is was there for the nucleotide base pairs of the human beings question number 158 the interaction between penicillium and bacteria is an example of so that is an example of amencellism so penicillium is a fungus that produce penicillin which is an antibiotic so fungus does not get affected in any way but bacteria has get killed so that is a type of amencellism when one species does not get benefited but other one species get harmed and other does not have any repercussion so it is an association between an organism of two different one is inhibited or destroyed other is unaffected so for example the bread mold penicillium has uh, secret penicillin is an example of amencellism uh, question number 159 which of the following constitute a population all the individuals of indian sandalwood species in a given area that is correct a group of leeches of the same species present in a given area so that is also correct all predators present in a given area uh, that is wrong all predators uh, does not constitute population it because it will include predators of different species so answer here is c 1 and 2 so in ecology a population is a group of individual of the same species inhabiting the same area functioning as a unit of biotic community statement 1 and 2 constitute a population because they are talking about sandalwood trees leeches etc but statement 3 is not and last question for the today is consider the following terms uh ultimate community serial community climax community which of the following represents final stable community in an ecological succession so answer is uh, climax that is b3 only so the final or stable community in an ecological succession is the climax community or climatic vegetation and it is self perpetuating in an equilibrium with the physical habitat there is no net annual accumulation of organic matter in a climax community and the annual production use of energy is balanced in such a community So answer here is B three only. Thank you for watching this lesson. Hey guys, what's up? So let us discuss environment and ecology MCQs. Question number one sixty one to one seventy, and this is a really really important course because it will really help you these thousand MCQs to solve every question which is possibly asked in the static portion of UPSC. If provided, if you uh, go through the uh, description very well. 
विच ऑफ द फॉलोइंग आर द मेन रीजन फॉर द ग्रेजुअल इरोजन ऑफ ताजमहल सल्फर डाइऑक्साइड एमिशंस फ्रॉम द फैक्ट्रीज यस दिस इज अ वेरी वेरी इंपॉर्टेंट रीजन देन देर इज वहीकुलर पॉल्यूशन यस सो दैट इज ऑल्सो अ वेरी बिग रीजन एंड देन देर आर इंसेक्ट्स सो यस दैट इज ऑल्सो करेक्ट सो आंसर हेयर इज डी वन टू थ्री सो वन इट कम्स टू ताज महल देर इज लॉट ऑफ इंडस्ट्रीज इन आगरा सो सल्फर डाइऑक्साइड विच इज एमिटेड फ्रॉम फैक्ट्रीज नियर दी ताज महल रिजल्ट इन एसिड रेन बिकॉज एस टू एस ओ फोर एंड नाइट्रिक एसिड आर रिस्पॉन्सिबल फॉर एसिड रेन इट कॉजेज सर्फेस डिसकलरेशन एंड एग्जॉस्ट फ्रॉम ट्रक्स बसेज ऑफ टूरिस्ट हेज ऑल्सो कंट्रीब्यूटेड टू दिस प्रॉब्लम नाउ स्वाम्स ऑफ इंसेक्ट्स विच आर ब्रीडिंग इन अ पॉलिटेड रिवर नियर दी ताज महल आर थ्रेटनिंग द इंट्रिकेट मार्बल इन ले वर्क बाई लिविंग ग्रीन एंड ब्लैक पैचेज ऑफ वेस्ट ऑन इट्स वॉल्स ओके बिकॉज वेन द डिफिकेट सो एवरी वेयर यू विल सी दैट ओनली सो there are huge issues and like this is one of the this is the most marvelous creature ever created by mankind so we should definitely protect it highly mobile organisms as well as higher life forms have so if you have highly mobile organisms they have to have higher respiratory rate okay and highly mobile organisms like higher life forms such as mammals we also have a very high respiratory rate so answer is c higher respiratory rate so respiration means energy which is required to keep the metabolism of organism growing on so respiration leads to the production of atp which in turn is the cell currency so highly mobile organisms as well as higher life forms such as mammals have higher and not lower respiratory rate so that point i think should be clear uh, question number 163 consider the following statements primary producers convert only a small fraction of sunlight to chemical energy Yes, that is correct. Absolutely correct. Primary production is the rate at which plants produce new organic matter through photosynthesis. So yes, both the statements are absolutely correct. So primary producers cannot convert like they are around one to ten percent maximum. That is the conversion that is possible. Ninety nine percent of the sunlight goes waste. Do you know this? And primary production is basically the rate at which the photosynthesis occurs and the new organic matter is produced. so only a small fraction as i told you 99% of the sun sunlight goes waste and less than 2% of the total solar light energy which is received by a plant is absorbed and transformed by photosynthesis into energy containing organic molecules which here includes starch the rest of the sun's energy passes out of the plant as heat and primary production is the rate basically at which plants produce new organic matter through photosynthesis so i think that point is clear Question number one sixty four. Which ecosystem has the following characteristics? Most have three level of plants. Okay, lichen, moss, ferns, uh, wild flowers, and other small plants can be found on the forest floor. Uh, it is definitely not mangroves at all. At all, absolutely not. Shrubs fill in the middle level, and hardwood trees like maple, oak, birch, magnolia, sweet gum, and beech make up the third level. so this is definitely we are talking about temperate deciduous forest and this is a typical example of that lichen moss are also found in tundra but you will not find like hardwood trees there so mangroves and tundra both goes out of the picture answer is c so temperate deciduous forest can be found in the eastern part of the united states and canada and most of europe and parts of china and japan and temperate deciduous forest they get between 30 and 60 inches of precipitation a year and this like the precipitation happens year round and the leaves of the deciduous trees they change color and fall off in the autumn and they grow back in the spring uh question number 165 consider the following trees mango tree okay which of the following is an evergreen tree so mango tree is definitely an evergreen tree uh teak wood tree is not an evergreen tree and uh, sandalwood tree is an evergreen tree so answer here is c that is 1 and 3 So mango tree is an evergreen tree and mangoes are found in all the tropical regions of the world and lowland tropical and subtropical areas. Teak is basically a tropical hardwood deciduous tree not an evergreen tree that occurs in the mixed hardwood forest and sandalwood is an evergreen tree which generally grows in the dry deciduous forests of the uh, Deccan plateau. Uh question number 166 the productivity of an ecosystem basically productivity goes on decreasing from the equator to the poles. so answer here is c so that the productivity is always highest at the equatorial uh, basically tropical rainforest and it is lowest towards the poles because there are hardly any plants there so productivity is drastically low so answer here is c so the productivity of an ecosystem depends on the level of heat moisture nutrients available competition amount of sunlight age and health of plants and hence this productivity increases towards the equator 
and it decreases away from it towards the poles so that statement is absolutely correct so answer is c for 166 question number 167 which of the following statements is correct so biodiversity refers to the quantity or weight this is wrong biomass refers to total plant weight including above ground and surface uh, this is wrong the productivity of open sea is less than that of shelf zone so this is correct so answer here is c so this productivity of open ocean is less than that of shelf zones and at greater depths the amount of total solar radiation present is usually insufficient to support the process of photosynthesis and maximum values of productivity can be attained in shallow water bodies with large quantities of mineral compounds which are essential for plant growth and biomass basically refers to the quantity or weight of living matter per unit per time okay uh, question number 168 which of the following statement is or are correct food chain is the transfer of food energy from one trophic level or nutrition level to another in a series of steps so that is also correct and uh, a complex food chain is an indication of large and well-developed biodiversity so answer here is c both one and two so here like uh, both these statements are correct so food chain is indeed the transfer of food energy and complex food chain is indicator of well-developed biodiversity so the path of energy through the trophic levels of an ecosystem is called as a food chain and energy is transferred along the food chains from one trophic level to the next but amount of available energy always decreases just 10 percent goes 90 percent goes to waste and complex food chain implies that the biodiversity is very stable question number 169 which of the following are correctly matched namdapa national park it is in arunachal pradesh that is correct uh, dachigam national park is in jammu and kashmir this is also correct periyar national park is in kerala so this is definitely wrong so answer here is only the first and second statement are correct so answer here is c uh, that is one and two so namdapa national park was established in 1974 in arunachal pradesh and Dachigam National Park, it was established in 1981 in Jammu and Kashmir. On the other hand, Periyar National Park is, was established in 1982 in Kerala. And question number 170, the production of uh, a complex chemical compound from simpler precursors in a living organisms which usually involve enzymes is known as. So that is basically biosynthesis. So bioremediation is basically use of either naturally occurring or deliberately introduced microorganisms to consume and break down environmental pollutants in order to clean a polluted site and biodegradation is basically disintegration of materials by bacteria fungi or other biological means hey guys what's up so let us discuss question number 171 to 118 environment and ecology let's get started see like if you want to use this course properly first of all i would like to say that uh, go through the entire 1000 mcqs properly and try to solve them learn the explanation otherwise it is absolutely meaningless okay it will not work otherwise question number 171 which of the following are the reason for the thickness of the atmosphere being maximum at equator so it has high insulation and strong convection currents which occur in troposphere over the equator so yes this is one of the biggest reason why it is the thick thickness is maximum at equator air is less dense at equator yes this is also a very big reason and centrifugal force due to earth's rotation is maximum at equator this is also correct so answer here is d one two three so regions near the equator they receive more sunlight than the poles making them hotter and less air dense so equatorial gases reach higher greater heights to exert the same pressure as at the poles and basically earth is rotating at a spin of 24 hours per spin and the gas molecules which are at poles are closer to this rotational axis while those which are near to the equator are farther away on a larger radius. Therefore, the air which is present at equator will experience a greater centrifugal force and it will move farther away from Earth. That is why the atmosphere is thicker here. Okay. Uh, question number 172. According to Malthus, okay, human population grows exponentially while food production grows at arithmetic rate. So what is arithmetic? 1, 2, 3, 4 okay or it can be like 2 4 6 8 10 12 14 these are all arithmetic progression where you add something but geometric is 1 2 4 8 16 32 64 128 256 where you are multiplying it by a certain number so answer here is a arithmetic rate so thomas robert malthus was the first economist to propose a systematic theory of population and he articulated his views regarding population in his famous book essay on the principles of population for which he collected a lot of empirical data to support his thesis and an essay on the principle of population 
Malthus proposes the principle that human population basically grows exponentially, that is, it doubles with each cycle, while food production grows at an arithmetic rate, that is, by the repeated addition of a uniform increment in each uniform interval of time. Thus, while food output was likely to increase in a series of 25 year intervals in the arithmetic progression 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9. Population was capable of increasing in the geometric progression like 1, 2, 4, 8, 16, 32 and so forth. But obviously this is not correct. Food production is also kept up with the population and population is like now declining in most of the countries. So this theory did not work. Bhopal gas strategy was caused by the leak of this is an important question for various government exam. Answer is methyl isocyanate mic gas. So Bhopal disaster also called as Bhopal tragedy. It happened on 3rd December 1984. And it was a gas leak incident in India. Union Carbide was the company, and it is considered the world's worst industrial disaster. And it occurred on 3rd December 1984 at Union Carbide India Limited, which is a pesticide plant in Bhopal, and it caused because of the leak of methyl isocyanate gas and lots and lots of other chemicals. Question number one is 74. Which ecosystem has the following characteristics of plants found in them? When you talk about nematophores, the only possible answer is mangroves, okay? Everything goes out of the picture. So nematophores are basically pneuma means air, force means pores. So these are pores in the plant roots, which help the plant in respiration because they grow in very much marshy area. So the moisture, uh, the air is not there in the uh, water. So they have nematophores, blind roots to overcome the respiration problems in the anaerobic soil conditions. And they exhibit VV parity mode of reproduction that is seeds germinate in the tree itself before falling to the ground. So answer here is mangrove. So these are adaptations to survive there. They have anaerobic soil conditions, saline water. Hence to overcome these problems, plants have adapted by producing nematophores and germinating seeds in the tree itself. Uh, question number 175. Lichens are important in the studies on atmospheric pollution because they, they are very very sensitive to pollution. That is why they are very very important. So answer here is D. They are sensitive to air pollutants. Lichens are small non-vascular plants. They are made up of algae and fungus and they grow together in one tissue. And even though some lichens are extremely tough and grow in very inhospitable habitats, they are very sensitive to air pollutants, especially sulfur dioxide, heavy metals. And they have no outer impermeable layer of tissue to exclude gases and particles. That is why they, it will impair their metabolism and that is why they are so sensitive. And uh, Consequently, accumulation of pollutants is greater than it is in the foliage of vascular plants which have impermeable cuticles and lichens accumulate unusually large amounts of deposits including the heavy metals which will eventually reach toxic concentrations. Uh, question number 176 which of the following is correct about greenhouse effect? So if you increase in the temperature due to increase in the CO2 concentration of the atmosphere obviously greenhouse effect has to increase the temperature and this is not oxygen this has to be CO2. So answer here is C that is increase in temperature due to increase in the carbon dioxide concentration of the atmosphere. So the greenhouse effect increases the temperature of earth by trapping heat in our atmosphere and greenhouse effect is basically caused by the interaction of the sun's energy with the greenhouse gases there are lots of them like CO2, methane, nitrous oxide, fluorinated gases in the earth's atmosphere and the ability of these gas to trap heat is what causes the greenhouse effect. Question number 177, which of the following forms the main sources of non-exhaust vehicular pollution? Tire wear, yes, wear from braking systems, yes, clutch wear, road surface wear, all of them. So answer here is D, 1, 2, 3, 4. So main sources of non-exhaust vehicular emissions include tire, brake, clutch, road surface wear and other degradation. They release significant amount of zinc, cadmium, cobalt, chromium, copper, mercury, molybdenum, nickel and lead. And another source of road dust is wear from braking systems. If you apply rapid brakes, they are exposed to extensive heat from friction, which is transmitted to the brake disc and result in the emission of particles. And asphalt, sandpaper like effects are significant sources of uh, nickel and uh, arsenic in the road dust. <coughs> Question number 178. The reduction of ozone content of the atmosphere is attributed to which of the following chemicals? So answer is CFC. So chlorofluorocarbons are the main cause of stratospheric ozone depletion and they have a lifetime of over 20 to 100 years and consequently one free chlorine can do a lot of damage destroying ozone molecules for hundreds of years. And when UV radiation hits a CFC molecule it causes one chlorine atom to break away. It combines with ozone and breaks the ozone into the oxygen molecules destroying the ozone into oxygen 
and when an oxygen molecule hits the molecule of chlorine the two atoms join and form an oxygen molecule again and when this happens the chlorine atom is again free and it continue to destroy ozone again and again and again question number 179 the tendency of the body to seek and maintain a condition of balance or equilibrium within its internal environment even when faced with external challenges that is called as homeostasis so metabolism is basically sum of all the chemical reaction that is taking place inside you and hibernation is basically winter inactivation and activation is summer inactivation so as you can see inactivity and metabolic depression which happens in winter or the cold environment question number 180 the demodox folliculorum might makes its home in human hair follicles while demodox brevis lives in oil secreting glands on the skin this is an example of basically commensalism where one species get benefited other derives neither benefit nor harm okay Amensalism is where like one gets harmed and other gets just like uh, no benefit at all. Mutualism when both the species get harm, uh, ho uh, like benefit. So thank you for watching this lesson. Hey guys, what's up? So let us discuss environment and ecology. Question one eighty one to one ninety. Uh, question number one: Consider the following statements. Uh, destruction of Himalayan ecosystem. Which of the following activities can include ecosystem instability? So yes, if you destroy your Himalayan ecosystem, obviously it will lead to ecological uh, instability, no doubt about it. Then replacement of natural vegetation, yes, that point is also absolutely true. Then you have introduction of exotic species, so that is also correct. So all these three points basically will lead to ecosystem instability. So answer here is D. One, two, three. All these three are correct. So ecosystem instability refers to the state when an ecosystem is unable to. adjust with environmental changes and ecosystem instability can occur due to natural factors such as massive volcanic eruption climate change like ice age and it is also include induced due to man made activities like destruction of himalayan ecosystem due to deforestation overgrazing which leads to increased weathering and erosion of soil then you have replacement of natural vegetation and animal species by a lot of cultivation or if you change the land use by urban land use introduction of exotic plant species such as water hyacinth etc then changing the proportion of atmospheric gases etc question number 182 which of the following are considered as an part of the aquatic ecosystem aquatic biome coral reefs yes definitely these are considered part then you have kelps so that is also correct absolutely right then you have estuaries so that is also correct so answer here becomes d that is 1 2 3 so an aquatic biome basically includes ecosystem like estuaries coral reefs kelp forests and uh, what are coral reefs coral reefs are basically very diverse underwater ecosystem which are held together by the calcium carbonate structure okay uh, secreted by the corals so that point is correct and kelp is a type of marine seaweed it is a brown algae and they are recognized as one of the most productive and dynamic ecosystems on the earth and an estuary is basically a partially enclosed coastal body of brackish water with one or more rivers or streams uh, flowing into it and uh, with a free connection to the open sea so all these points are absolutely correct the answer is d 1 2 3 uh, question number 183 uh, cfc not only causes ozone depletion it also contributes to global warming so that statement uh, this statement here uh, is absolutely correct uh question number two, point number 2 uh, greenhouse gases effect makes the ozone depletion worse so that is also correct so answer here becomes c both one and two because both these statements are correct here so cfc not only causes ozone depletion it also contributes to uh, global warming so that point is absolutely correct and uh, for your second point a link with ozone depletion is that cfcs are gases which also links to greenhouse warming okay so that is not an issue and the greenhouse effect basically warms the surface it allows the higher atmosphere where ozone is present to cool down and this means that the more stratospheric clouds may form and so the ozone hole will eventually worsen so answer here is c that is both 1 uh, and 2 so both these statements are correct question number 184 if you open the door of a car that has been left parked in the sun for a couple of hours you'll notice that the temperature inside the car is much warmer than the outside why does why does this happen this happens because of the greenhouse effect so because the windows of the car allow the sunlight to enter and this light once inside it is partially converted into heat 
but windows do not allow the heat inside the car to pass through as easily as light so some of this heat will accumulate now the net effect is that the more heat remains in the car than come out increasing the temperature inside the car so this is what happens with earth also with a carbon dioxide sheet uh, question number 185 which of the following statements about bio indicators are correct a bio indicator is a living organism that gives us an idea of the health of an ecosystem so that statement is absolutely correct uh lichen is a bio indicator species which is very very sensitive to air pollution so both these statements are correct answer here is c that is both one and two so a bio indicator is basically any species or group of species whose function uh, population status etc uh, can reveal the qualitative status uh, yes this is correct because they can reveal a lot about the environment so that statement is 100 percent correct lichens are excellent bio indicators bio monitors because the presence or absence of sensitive species basically you can know whether the pollution is there or not so that is also there and uh, voids and distribution may indicate whether lichens have died out due to heavy metals or sulfur oxide pollution question number 186 which of the following is the highest net primary productivity so whenever they ask this question answer is estuaries in these three so estuaries productivity in continental shelf basically the shallow regions is always higher than in the deep oceans why because sunlight does not penetrate so deep so that point you have to uh, consider and uh, yeah, estuary is a very high productivity because like uh, river and uh, water river water has a lot of fresh nutrients with it and that comes into the cycle and areas that are warm and wet generally are more productive and overall the amount of water available will limit the uh, primary production hence many terrestrial ecosystem have lesser net primary productivity than the marine ecosystem especially the estuaries swamps and marshes okay, question number 187 it is an assertion reason type of question okay so assertion says most major fisheries are at points of upwelling so this is correct areas where cold currents swell up continuously from the seabed are constantly supplied with nutrients this is also correct so it is the correct explanation as well so upwelling is a process in which deep cold water will rise towards the surface and this will bring the nutrients along with it and these nutrients fertilize surface water meaning that these surface waters often have high biological productivity so a lot of fishes will be there uh, and you can do a lot of fishing here uh, question number 188 productivity in the arctic ocean is usually very low this is absolutely correct because a lot of cold is there so it will restrict the enzyme activity even though all the other requirement for photosynthesis may be in excess so you need temperature for photosynthesis so answer is a so primary productivity is strongly dependent upon light and the uh, nutrients and even the temperature since the temperature is very low, enzymes activity get restricted and photosynthesis cannot occur. That much obviously some happen. The deciduous trees and plants shed leaves too because they will freeze in the water, uh, freeze in the winter rather. So answer is avoid damage of freezing in the winter. So in the cold winter, deciduous trees and plants grow into dormancy, kind of like sleep. It is too cold for them to protect their leaves from the damage of freezing in the winter. So they simply dispose them, seal up the places where the leaves attach to the branch and the warmer spring days signal to the trees that they can grow the leaves again now and finally basically restart the cycle. So how does it happen? How does the tree leaves fall? So there is a plant hormone which is called as ABA or also called as abscisic acid. So there are five hormones, auxin, gibberellin, cytokinin, abscisic acid and thylene. So it is the abscisic acid that is responsible for this. So they may ask you which is responsible for ripening of the fruits, answer is the thylene. If they ask you which is responsible for falling of the tree leaves, then answer is abscisic acid. Then question number 190, which of the following act as a limiting factor for photosynthesis under the natural condition? Answer is B, that is carbon dioxide. That is why if there is global warming because of CO2, photosynthesis will actually increase. So three factors can limit the speed of photosynthesis, light intensity, CO2 and temperature. Okay. And uh, photosynthesis is limited by the concentration of CO2 in the air. And even if there is plenty of light, a plant cannot photosynthesize if there is insufficient CO2. So thank you for watching this lesson. Hey guys, what's up? So we are discussing and finally we are reaching the 200th mark that is 20% completion of environment and ecology. As I promised, I will cover 1000 MCQs from the static portion of environment and ecology and by the time you are done watching this course, you will have so much knowledge about environment and ecology that you might not even need to study any book. Obviously, you need to study newspaper and yojana and whatnot for current affairs, but that's about it. So let us discuss question number 191 to 200. Okay. 
फॉरेस्ट प्ले अ वेरी इंपॉर्टेंट रोल इन फ्लड प्रिवेंशन येस एवरीबडी नोज अबाउट इट राइट इफ यू हैव लॉट ऑफ मैंग्रोव इट विल नॉट लीड द सुनामी डेवेस्टेशन ट्रीज होल्ड द सॉइल टूगेदर एंड दे प्रिवेंट इरोजन बाय रेनी वाटर दिस स्टेटमेंट इज ऑल्सो करेक्ट एंड इट इज द करेक्ट रीजन सो बोथ दी असरशन एंड रीजन आर ट्रू रीजन इज द करेक्ट एक्सप्लेनेशन ऑफ ए आंसर बिकम्स ए सो फॉरेस्ट कैन रिटेन एक्सेस रेन वाटर इट प्रिवेंट एक्सट्रीम रन ऑफ्स एंड इट रिड्यूज द डैमेज फ्रॉम फ्लडिंग इवन वेन देर इज लॉट ऑफ सुनामी द मैंग्रोव एरिया दे हैव लॉट ऑफ मैंग्रोव इट डज नॉट अफेक्टेड दैट मच बट इफ यू कट द मैंग्रोव इट रियली डिस्ट्रॉयज दैट पर्टिकुलर एरिया क्वेश्चन नंबर वन नाइनटी टू विच ऑफ द फॉलोइंग आर करेक्टली मैस्ड कार्बन डाइऑक्साइड वाटर वेपर मीथेन यस दे आर ग्रीन हाउस गैसेज यस दे लीड टू ग्रीन हाउस इफेक्ट यस दे लीड टू ग्लोबल वार्मिंग यस दे लीड टू क्लाइमेट चेंज यस दे लीड टू सीवियर रिपरकशंस इंक्रीज बायोलॉजिकल ऑक्सीजन डिमांड हैपन इन यूट्रॉफिकेशन दैट इज ऑल्सो करेक्ट यूट्रॉफिकेशन इज अ फिनोमिन वेर इज एन इनक्लोज वाटर बॉडी लाइक लेक एक्सेट्रा गेट रिच इन फॉस्फोरस एंड नाइट्रोजन एंड दिस लीड्स टू द प्रोडक्शन ऑफ एलगी एंड एलगल ब्लूम हैपन्स यूजली इट हैपन्स वेन देर इज एन इंडस्ट्रियल रन ऑफ इट लीड्स टू ग्रोथ ऑफ द एलगी इट लीड्स टू इंक्रीज बायोलॉजिकल ऑक्सीजन डिमांड इट रिड्यूस टू इट लीड्स टू रिड्यूस ऑक्सीजन सप्लाई इट लीड्स टू द डेथ ऑफ द स्पीसीज इन दिस पर्टिकुलर जोन ऑफ द लेक नाइट्रोसोमनास एंड नाइट्रोपैक्टर डी नाइट्रिफिकेशन दिस इज रॉन्ग दे हेल्प इन नाइट्रिफिकेशन सो आंसर इज सी वन एंड टू सो नाइट्रोसोमनास एंड नाइट्रोपैक्टर दे हेल्प इन नाइट्रिफिकेशन वॉट डू यू मीन बाई नाइट्रिफिकेशन इन नेचर इट इज अ टू स्टेप ऑक्सीडेशन प्रोसेस ऑफ अमोनिया टू नाइट्रेट कैटेलाइज बाय द टू बैक्टीरियल ग्रुप्स एंड द फर्स्ट रिएक्शन इज ऑक्सीडेशन ऑफ अमोनियम टू नाइट्राइट एंड द सेकेंड रिएक्शन इज ऑक्सीडेशन ऑफ नाइट्राइट टू नाइट्रेट फर्स्ट इज डन बाय नाइट्रोसोमनास सेकेंड इज डन बाय नाइट्रोबैक्टर क्वेश्चन नंबर नाइन वन नाइन्टी थ्री आइडेंटिफाई द फ्रूट यूजिंग द फॉलोइंग फीचर्स इट ग्रोज इन लोलैंड ट्रॉपिकल एंड सब ट्रॉपिकल एरियाज कैन नॉट आइडेंटिफाई इट रिक्वायर्स अ फ्रॉस्ट फ्री क्लाइमेट मस्ट हैव वार्म ड्राई वेदर टू सूट सेट फ्रूट इट इज ऑल्सो कॉल्ड नेशनल फ्रूट ऑफ इंडिया जस्ट बाय नोइंग द लास्ट फैक्ट इफ यू नो इट दैन ओनली यू कैन गैस द आंसर आंसर इज बेसिकली मैंगो मैंगी फॉर इंडिका सो नेशनल फ्रूट ऑफ इंडिया इज मैंगो आम फलों का राजा है सो नेशनल फ्रूट ऑफ इंडिया इज द मैंगो and the mango is a fleshy stone fruit belong to the genus mangifera and they are rich in vitamin a vitamin c vitamin d and it is also called as the king of fruits question number 194 which of the following is are regarded as environmental movements chipko movement is definitely an environmental movement it is also called as chipko andolan non violent social and ecological movement second is narmada bachao andolan yes this is also there and third is silent valley movement it is there in palakkad district of kerala it's a silent valley and evergreen tropical forest so answer here is d 1 2 3 all of these are regarded as environmental movements in one way or the other the chipko movement also called as chipko andolan is a non violent social and ecological movement by rural villagers particularly the women in india in the 70s and it is aimed at protecting trees forests which are slated for government backed logging and so basically if government wants to cut them even then people don't allow the, the government to cut it narmacha narmada bachao andolan was a mass movement which started in 1985 against the construction of dam across narmada river which would submerge hundreds of villages cause extensive ecological damage so this is also correct then you have a silent valley movement and it was aimed at the protection of silent valley silent valley is basically an evergreen tropical forest in the palakkad district of kerala Question number one ninety five. Which of the following are correctly matched? The equatorial region. Just imagine Kerala. Yes, there is rain throughout the year, all the time. Savanna region has summer rains. Yes, uh, that is correct. Most of the rainfall occurs during summers. And Mediterranean have summer drought and they have wet winters. And hot and dry summers and mild and wet and cool winters. Answer is D one two three. The tropical rainforest have no summer or winter. It is typically hot and wet throughout the year, and rainfall is both heavy and frequent. Savanna basically experiences the most rainfall in the year during the summers, and Mediterranean climate typically experiences hot and dry summers where there is not much rain, and they have mild wet winters. Question number one ninety six. Mangroves is an example for a climax vegetation along which of the following regions? So they are found along the coasts. Okay. so under the right construction and uh, right conditions like when there is delta formation etc when there is formation of mud flat growth of mangroves is initiated and stabilization of mud flat is a preliminary process in the establishment of mangroves and pioneer plant species basically initiate the process of stabilization of mud flats 
now roots of these plants they help in binding the soil and they also help the establishment of microorganisms which further help in stabilizing the area and stabilization starts from the land side gradually shift towards the sea and pioneer plants are slowly replaced by mangrove plants and once mangroves grow the submerged banks are fully stabilized and plants slowly reach a stage where it is called as the climax vegetation where it is in uh, equilibrium with the environment which of the following chemical is used in artificial drain answer is silver iodide so the process involved in artificial drain making involves three easy to understand stages first is agitation you agitate it so use the chemicals to stimulate the air mass second is build up stage here the cloud mass is built up using chemicals and finally bombardment of chemicals such as super cool agents so silver iodide and dry ice they are used to reach the most unbalanced status which builds up large beads of water nuclei and they have to fall down as raindrops because of gravity Question number one ninety eight. The interaction between mosquito and human being is an example of parasitism. So mosquitoes are parasite on us. Commensalism means when one species is benefited, other does not care, neither benefit nor harm. Amensalism basically means where one species is inhibited or destroyed, other remains when not benefited, neither harm, remains unaffected. Third is predation, where one eats the other, uh, and parasitism is basically. A non-mutual relationship between species, where one species, the parasite, benefits at the expense of the other, who is called as the host. Question number one ninety nine: When too much sewage enters water bodies, fish die because see, whenever sewage or industrial effluents they come, they are rich in nitrogen, phosphorus, etc. It leads to enrichment of the lake. U means good, trophication means nutrition. So it leads to good nutrition of the lakes. It results in asphyxiation of the fish, and fish dies. So fish mortality highlights asphyxiation due to enhanced biological activities with high nutrient input into the lake through the sewage and increased organic content and availability of sunlight will see more algae growth which compete with fish for oxygen and this is also called as eutrophication okay and question number 200 which of the following statements about the cause of the acid rain is correct gases released during combustion they combine with water to form the acid rain So this is correct. CFCs cause the breakup of molecules to produce acids. Uh, this is wrong. Uh, radiation causing a reaction with water as a result of the hole in the ozone layer. This is also wrong. Answer is A one only. So acid rain is caused by emission of sulfur dioxide, which converts into sulfuric acid, nitrogen oxide, which converts into nitric acid, and they react with the water molecules to produce these acids. So thank you for watching this lesson. Two hundred are done. Eight hundred more to go.